piece of piece in a sense is like giant illuminated manuscripts done with materials as precious as anything we can imagine while we're on this earth. Protecting cities, honoring cities, is one of the main goals of Cities of Peace. And it's partly that that makes Cities of Peace unique in the world, in the world of art. There's no one else devoting artwork to honoring world cities that have been traumatized by war. Cities of Peace actually works on many levels. It works in the creation stage, research creation stage. It works to build peace among people working on the paintings who don't know each other, who come from different cultures. We inculcate peace and a new language and vocabulary in the making. Then the finished painting, when exhibited, influences an audience to think of peace. When Anna described me in detail the story, I had no doubt that we have to do whatever is possible to have this exhibition in the town of Oshvinshim in connection with the 70th anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz-Birkenau camp. I was invited to speak at the 70th commemoration, and it was the greatest honor of a lifetime. It was humbling. It was traumatic. It's the human heart. I was confronted by the anguish of Polish artists trying to create in the shadow of Auschwitz-Birkenau. Overwhelmed by that, we are unable to understand Auschwitz at all. What is Auschwitz as a conception? At all? The question is, what has to be done in order to memorize the Holocaust? And it was obvious we have to do it because it's so important because of the timing, Oświęcim, meaning Auschwitz, absolutely has to be on this list. The next painting has a dual purpose, and this is new for Cities of Peace. It commemorates the liberation, so it has a mandate to celebrate freedom, and it's about the town. When you are confronted with a tragedy symbolized by Oświęcim, very often we are unable to find proper words. In such a situation, the language of art is the only best solution. Mm -hmm.